Hi everyone! Welcome to All Things Iceland, the go-to place for Icelandic culture, language, nature, and history. My name is Jules and today I'm going to shed some light on some really fascinating black history here in Iceland. And Black History Month, which is the month of February, is something that is acknowledged and celebrated in the United States. And as a U.S. citizen, uh, of course, this month is something that is significant to me, but it isn't to Icelanders, of course. But in my own little way, I wanted to celebrate Black history by talking about the first Black citizen in Iceland and the story of this really fascinating human that ended up coming to Iceland back in the 1800s. So just to give you some backstory, there is a book called The Man Who Stole Himself by an Icelander, Gisli Paulsson. And he is essentially sharing the life of Hans Janotun, which you could also say Hans Jonathan, but in Icelandic it's Hans Janotun, who was a enslaved Caribbean Danish individual. So Hans was born into slavery in 1784 in St. Croix, which at the time was part of the Danish West Indies. Hans' mother was of African descent, but it wasn't registered who his father was. However, Geisley, the author of the book, The Man Who Stole Himself, that I mentioned earlier, speculates that it was a colonial secretary who is of European descent, of course. So Hans grew up being an enslaved multiracial individual, which was not uncommon during those times. The owner of Hans, his mother, and many other enslaved people was Ludwig von Schimmelmann and his wife Henrietta. Later in the 1700s, it was becoming apparent that the slave trade was not, be, not going to be as lucrative as a business for many individuals. So Ludwig decided to take his family and the people he was in, and many of the people that he enslaved to Denmark in order to find another industry or other opportunities to make money. When Hans reached Denmark, his life completely changed. So he learned how to write, read, calculate, play an instrument. He started to have a life of a person that one, starts to learn critical thinking, especially if you're reading and, and learning about different philosophies, about life, being engaged with different types of people. And in his mind, it just didn't make sense for him to be enslaved. I am in my own way elaborating kind of what his thoughts might have been because at some point he ends up running away and joins the Danish Navy. And he's helping Denmark to fight against Britain in the Napoleonic Wars. And during this time, he fights with distinction and the captain of his ship grants him freedom because he did such a great job. And, and of course, in maybe his own logical way, he felt if I show that I fight for Denmark and that you know I am willing to put my life on the line, maybe the country will recognize that I shouldn't be enslaved and that this is just really unfair. I'm, I'm a person too, and I'm an individual that deserves equality and to be seen as an equal. While it was great that the ship captain said he could be free, it didn't necessarily mean that he was free. During the time that Hans went to fight in the war, Ludwig ended up dying and Henrietta became essentially the master of the house. So when she got wind that Hans had been freed by the captain of the ship he was on during the war, she was not having it. She ended up taking Hans to court uh, in order to get him back at, to being enslaved under her and Hans lost his case. But uh, never the one to give up, Hans was like, you know what, screw this. <laughs> I'm leaving this place. So he ran away again and this time he boarded a ship a Danish ship going to Iceland. And it's important to note that Iceland was ruled by Denmark for 500 years and this time period falls under that. So Icelandic people were quite poor and having to deal with being under Danish rule, which at times could be really unfair, especially when it came to trading with other countries. And there's a whole lot of other backstory there. But I talk about 
in my podcast, All Things Iceland. So I'll link to that if you would like to kind of uh, understand more. Back to Hans. So Hans ends up going to Iceland and specifically Djupavogur, which is a town in the East Fjords. And when he gets there, he's pretty much welcomed with open arms. It's fascinating to me because this story really is one that sheds light on the fact that racism is a concept. It's something that was constructed in order for people to believe that one set of individuals is better than the other. And Icelanders were so isolated that they weren't really aware of the concept of racism that had been spreading throughout Europe all throughout the you know slave trade and just like interacting with other cultures. So Hans was lucky that Icelanders hadn't been exposed to that yet and the concept of you are less than because of the color of your skin and you deserve to be oppressed or whatever else. I mean to be fair Icelanders are being oppressed by the Danish right so to them it's like anyone who's being oppressed is pretty much like us so they could understand but he was also just a fascinating person and many people are aware that Icelandic people are super curious. Thankfully, this ended up working out really well for Hans because after he decided to settle in this town, he ended up becoming a tenant farmer, he married a local woman named Katrin, they ended up having two kids and they lived their lives. At one point when Hans was around the age of 43, he ended up dying unfortunately of a stroke and leaving his legacy though with his kids and this story. Denmark had no idea that he had ended up in Iceland until like the 2000s. So he did a great job of kind of <laughs> making him, covering his tracks. And what I also found really fascinating is that Kaure Stefansson, who is the CEO of Deco Genetics here in Reykjavik, which he is a pioneer in genetics and his company has played a huge role in helping to push forward the mapping of the human genome. His father was from this town in the East Fjords and would speak highly of Hans Janotin. Even though his father didn't know Hans Janotin, Kauri's dad still, like in other people, they would tell this story of this black man that came to Iceland and basically was accepted and considered someone notable to remember and talk about. So of course this got Kaure thinking since this story was one that he had heard since childhood and he was like, well, you know what? I want to recreate the genome of Hans Janotin because he has descendants in Iceland and in the US. And it's because just US wise, some people, some Icelanders had moved from Iceland to the US. But that's another story for another time. So Kauri went about using the genetics from descendants of Hans in order to recreate Hans' genome. And what's well, interesting about that too is that some people who had no idea they were descendants of Hans ended up being notified that they were indeed descendants. And to my surprise, so during an interview that I did with Kaure for the All Things Iceland podcast, which I highly recommend checking out, link in the description box, Kaure says that people were ex super excited. So Icelandic people were super excited to learn that they were related to Hans Janotin, which again, kind of speaks volumes about Icelanders and kind of this openness to diversity as well as acceptance of different types of people. Even though it has crept in for some people this idea of if you're you know white supremacy or exceptionalism because you're of Nordic descent it is not spread throughout the country here in Iceland and just on a personal note I've not felt like People have, have treated me differently because of the color of my skin. Of course, yes, they notice me because I look different. At the same time, I feel very safe here. And I always recommend to people, whether you're a person of color, a woman, part of the LGBTQ community, Iceland is very welcoming, or at least in my experience has been very welcoming. So that's the story of Hans Janotin and some little extras. So if you found this video interesting, informational, entertaining, or even all of those things, <laughs> please give it a thumbs up. If you like this type of content 
I definitely plan on sharing more about Icelandic society, different stories, and just information in general that you might not normally hear related to this country. Because there's a lot that happens that stays within Iceland because either it's talked about in Icelandic or it's just a historical fact that not many people are aware of. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on content like that, as well as hit the notification bell because then you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.